Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10. Egyptian Kings from Heaven There is a document known as the Turin King List. It's an extremely old piece of papyrus from about 3,000 years ago, created by scribes during the reign of Ramses II. The list is filled chronologically with the names of Egyptian rulers. In fact, it is the most extensive list from ancient Egypt that details the kings and overlords of the great nation. However, the beginning of the list was never found, and neither was the end of it, and so it's not totally complete. Scholars have been able to learn a lot of information from the list. It details the names of the rulers, how long they were in power, including months and days, and even which rulers were connected by family. It's basically a cheat sheet going back thousands of years for the entire history of the ruling class in Egypt. But there's something very mysterious about the Turin King List, and one major problem. Not only does it name rulers going back to the 15th dynasty, but it also lists mythical kings and gods. Mixed in with the names of the normal human kings are legendary beings that supposedly ruled Egypt, creatures that came down from the sky to take over the country. Many of these are listed as having ruled the kingdom before the days of the pharaohs. Obviously, there's a bit of confusion here. If the list is to be believed, Egypt was dominated by god kings who ruled over a mythical time in Egypt's history, before the days of the pharaohs. Either Egypt really was first ruled by godly beings from the sky, or the Egyptians just believed that such a time existed in what they thought of as their ancient past. Number 9. The First Exorcism In France, during the 1590s, there was a young woman by the name of Martha Brossier. She became a pretty well-known celebrity because it was widely believed she was possessed by demons. But it wasn't only her possession that made her famous. It was the fact that her parents took her on tour. They went from town to town and put on a show, with Martha Brossier and the demon inside of her drawing packed crowds of spectators. According to the old reports, the girl's eyes would roll back in her head, she would flick her tongue out like a snake, and convulse while growling in a deep and demonic voice. This was so outrageous that even King Henry IV got himself involved. He decided the girl needed to be cured of the demon inside her, and so he ordered what became the first scientifically controlled exorcism. A group of high priests gathered around the girl, placed a piece of wood in her mouth to keep her from swallowing her tongue, sprinkled her with holy water, and recited holy scripture while the demon inside of her screamed in misery. But what Martha didn't realize was that the exorcism was fake. It was just normal water she was being sprinkled with and the holy scripture was just Latin poetry. The whole thing was a scientific experiment, something set up by the king himself to expose Martha and her family as the fraud. Number 8. The Vatican Mythographers The Vatican Mythographers are a group of unknown authors responsible for writing a small collection of medieval texts. These unknown people, with ties directly to the Vatican, wrote down Latin translations of all the Greek and Roman myths they could find. All of these texts were then put into a single medieval manuscript, which was published later on in 1831 by Cardinal Angelo Mai. The thing about these translations is that they very well may have shaped our modern understanding of mythology, specifically that of ancient Greece and Rome. As you may already know, most fairy tales, stories like Cinderella and Hansel and Gretel, are actually pretty horrifying in their original forms. These were tales of caution from hundreds of years ago told to children to keep them well behaved. And in the same way, the ancient Greek myths were altered into Christian fairy tales by the Vatican mythographers. They took the original stories and rewrote them to fit their own Christian purposes. Not everything in the stories was changed, but when these manuscripts were written in the 12th century, Roughly 234 myths were retold through the Christian lens. Everything we know about gods like Zeus and Hades, and the legends of those like Medusa and Perseus, it's all a byproduct of the Vatican mythographers. Number 7. Aztec God's Flesh The use of psychedelic mushrooms can be traced back over 6,000 years. Some of the oldest surviving evidence of prehistoric people eating mushrooms to have a hallucinogenic experience is in Villar del Humo, Spain. 
That's where scientists have uncovered cave paintings displaying psychoactive mushrooms. In Spain, prehistoric humans munched on Psilocybe hispanica, the only native Spanish mushroom known to get a person high. On the other side of the world, the Mesoamerican cultures feasted on something called Psilocybe aztecorum, or the Aztec god's flesh mushrooms. It was the Aztec who had a particular hunger for these fascinating psychedelic shrooms. In fact, many historians believe that hallucinogenic substances played a massive part in Aztec religious life. And it wasn't only mushrooms. A research study by Bernardino de Saaun identified five key substances the Aztecs used to keep themselves in a pretty constant state of intoxication, including the slime from the bufo toad. The bare truth is that the Aztec had a serious issue with hallucinogens. They used these kinds of substances during festivals, at celebrations, whenever an important person came over for a meeting. It was a major part of the culture and was used in all rituals involving divination, dream interpretation, prophecy, and even ordinary healing. If you went to see the doctor during the days of the Aztec, chances are the doctor was out of his mind on mushrooms. Number 6. Hatshepsut's Myrrh Tree There is a very mysterious tree in Egypt whose roots can apparently be traced back to one of the most famous queens in history. Her name is Hatshepsut, and if it had been up to one very bitter pharaoh, we wouldn't even know her name because she was nearly erased from the history books. After her stepson Tutmos III came into power following her death, he immediately began destroying all records and accounts of Hatshepsut's rule. Scholars believe it was revenge because Tutmos had wanted to inherit the throne from his father, but she had seized it instead and ruled for years. She had actually become one of the most respected rulers in ancient history, and so her stepson sourly tried to delete her from existence. But he failed, and today we know all about Hatshepsut's great accomplishments. However, there is one great thing Hatshepsut did that's a little more mysterious than the others. There is a myrrh tree at Hatshepsut's mortuary temple on the Nile. It's a withered old tree stump, somehow still standing despite being beaten by the Egyptian sun for thousands of years. It was put there 3,500 years ago, allegedly brought back from one of Hatshepsut's expeditions to the mysterious land of Punt. What's so mysterious is that nobody knows where the land of Punt actually is or was. Some scholars believe it was Somalia, but that's never been confirmed. All we know is the Egyptians thought of Punt as a land of great intrigue, exotic delights, and magic. The ancient Egyptians thought of Punt the same way we think of the ancient Egyptians. And apparently, Queen Hatshepsut brought this very tree back from the unknown exotic land. And, as if by magic, it is still standing in front of her temple all these years later. Number 5. The Spear of Destiny no other holy relic in the world goes by so many names. I'm talking about the Spear of Destiny, the Holy Lance, the Lance of Longinus, the Spear of Longinus, and even the Spear of Christ. These are all the names that were given to the lance that supposedly pierced Jesus' side as he was crucified on the cross. The lance is described in detail in the Gospel of John. Now, nobody can say for sure if the spear was real because nobody even knows if Jesus truly existed. However, the spear was allegedly rediscovered by Helena of Constantinople when she traveled to the Holy Land sometime around 300 AD. It became an important relic in the Middle Ages and played a significant role in several of the Crusaders' biggest battles. And then it vanished. Nobody knows where it is today, but there is a bizarre rumor that Adolf Hitler had an obsession with the spear and sent his own men to find it. It's also important to note that there are a lot of fakes out there. There is a holy lance held in a museum in Vienna that was supposedly wielded by the soldier Longinus. And then there's the story of Dr. Howard Buchner. The doctor says that the spear was sent to Antarctica with a whole bunch of other Nazi treasures after the end of World War II. Then, in the 1970s, those treasures were rediscovered by a secret Nazi society and are now being hidden in Europe. Number 4. Mysterious Ancient Tooth There is some very strange science happening regarding our ancient ancestors. A tooth which once belonged to a young girl was discovered in a cave in the Southeast Asian country of Laos. 
the tooth is 164,000 years old, and it belonged to a human lineage scientists call the Denisovans. The only other evidence of this bizarre form of ancient humans has come from other caves in Siberia and China. Finding a tooth from the exact same type of mysterious humanoid in Laos shows that the Denisovans must have lived in a wide range of environments, conditions, and latitudes. They lived all the way from the tropical forests of Southeast Asia to the freezing cold of the Siberian tundra. But just who were these ancient people, so distantly related to us on our human family tree? The experts aren't entirely sure. What they do say is that about 700,000 years ago, modern humans separated from Neanderthals and Denisovans. And then, about 400,000 years ago, the Neanderthals and Denisovans diverged. Although, for the next several hundred thousand years, they continue to mate with humans. The truth is that scientists don't know a lot about them. All they found so far are five confirmed fossils, consisting of three teeth, one finger bone, and a single jawbone. Number 3. Canaanite Goddess While cultivating some fields near the city of Khan Yunis near the Gaza Strip, a farmer came across an extraordinarily rare sculpture. The sculpture dates back 4,500 years. It's a stone head which had broken off of its body centuries ago. And while it's a little difficult to identify the face of the statue beyond any doubt, archaeologists believe it could very well be the Canaanite goddess Anat. Anat was the goddess of love, beauty, and also war in the mythology of the Canaanites. This is according to Jamal Abu Rida, the local ministry director, who said her statue was discovered with a snake crown, which was once the symbol of strength and invincibility for the Canaanites. It was the Canaanites who lived in the ancient territory of Canaan, what is today Israel, Palestine, Jordan, Syria, and Lebanon. They are considered to be one of the oldest civilizations in human history. Anat was a truly remarkable goddess and was worshipped by everyone from the Canaanites to the Egyptians. This is something not a lot of people know. In ancient times, gods were basically like celebrities. The most popular would be passed around by word of mouth, they would become more popular in different cultures, and then you had deities like Anat and Zeus being worshipped across all of the Mediterranean. In fact, Anat became so popular that she morphed and turned into a whole bunch of different goddesses in the ancient world. She would even go on to become the goddess Athena in Greek mythology. The Greeks took Anat, moved some letters around, made her a goddess of wisdom, and that was that. Number 2. Stonehenge Hunting Pits The mystery of Stonehenge just keeps getting stranger. Researchers have just discovered hunting pits dated at over 10,000 years old, made far before the actual stones were ever erected at this ancient monument. The find was made by archaeologists with the University of Birmingham. The pits are about 13 feet wide and over 6 feet deep, and were made by hunter-gatherers between 8,200 BC and 7,800 BC. This was during the Mesolithic period, just after the Ice Age came to an end. The first important thing to note is that the hunting pits have nothing to do with Stonehenge itself. Rather, it all has to do with this specific part of England. These are some of the oldest prehistoric pits that have ever been excavated, and it shows that people were continuously drawn to this area for about 7,000 years. From primitive people all the way to the Bronze Age, from living in caves to practicing agriculture. The mystery is that we still have no idea what drew human beings to Stonehenge. Even thousands of years before the first stones were put up, humans were digging holes all around the site. It's almost as if there is something in the soil here that drew ancient humans directly to this spot. Number 1. The Secret Greek Gods Even in the days of ancient Greece, some knowledge and some beliefs were considered forbidden. While gods like Zeus and Poseidon may have been mainstream, there were other gods who were worshipped by a secret underground cult. These gods were called the Kabaidi. This mysterious cult was so secret that we still don't know much about it today. Historians believe the cultist activity was centered on the islands of Lemnos and Samothrace. However, the worship of the Kabaidi gods could have taken place outside of Greece as well. One of the most important places of worship for these discreet cult members was the Sanctuary of the Great Gods, or the Samothrace Temple Complex. It was built to the west of the city just at the fringe of civilization. 
We don't know all the gods they worshipped, but we do know that they had a special place for the divine witch Hecate, the fertility goddess Demeter, and her daughter Persephone, and the sea divinities called Daemonies. Archaeological evidence suggests there were two main figures at the core of this cult, but nobody has ever been able to identify them. Thanks for watching! Hope you learned something new today! Remember to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you soon! Bye!